Hey, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I'm going to go through the uh, index watch, and at the very end, I'm going to talk a little bit about Friday's price action, which I found quite interesting, having trend day down and trend day up. Uh, but let's start with IWM, which is the Russell. It's the uh, Russell ETF, and uh, talk about the price action on last week. And uh, since I wasn't here the week before, we'll talk a little bit about the week before. So this is the monthly chart, the weekly chart, and the daily chart, just as a recap. And you can see that um, you know we've been talking about being within this trading range here, and we did get on the Friday. Uh, the week before a close outside of that I would have liked to have seen the breakout volume be a little bit greater on the week um, and as it turned out we actually did pull back within the range again but uh, we did have the close last uh, a week two weeks ago on Friday or you know two Fridays ago and uh, it was closed up on the high and we were we would normally look for continuation and if I look in the daily chart that's this close here on the Friday and then the Monday we did get continuation uh, upward. We had some pretty big range day, right? We had an outside day on the range closed up near the high. And you would think normally we would have uh, more continuation upward. It was a news driven week with all the China news and several other things that were going on during the week. And of course we did have a pretty big pullback. Uh, we had talked about the, you know, the RSI on the week you know, we were in this range, wasn't in an overbought area. Uh, the MACD had come back down, kissed the zero line, and was coming back up. So, you know, it didn't look, it looked for all intents and purposes like, you know, IWM was going to start heading back up towards the upper end of this, uh, you know, long term price channel that we had here. The center line is held very well. It was tested, you know, here and here and here on the weekly. And uh, we were starting to break away from it, which is kind of what we were looking for. Didn't quite happen that way. We did end up having a, a big pullback. I'm going to zoom in on the daily chart now and talk a little bit about that. And uh, I'll share some concerns that I have here going forward. But um, <clears throat> the daily chart, we did have uh, the breakout, small continuation. Uh, and then we really started following falling on... Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We did have buying tails on Thursday and Friday. Uh, Friday was an outside day. We had a lower low and a higher high. And we closed up near the high. So you, you would normally think uh, that we would probably get some continued uh, price action to the upside and probably you know, we'll have some resistance at the top of the cloud in this 49 EMA. If we get through that, you know, uh, maybe we released enough of the upward, um, you know, bullish price action and, uh, you know, bull buyers here. We released some of that activity and, uh, you know, sometimes you've got to pull back in a market for it to continue an upward trend. That's probably the best way I'm going to say this. Um, and really going forward in order for this move to continue upward, what we have to start seeing is having higher lows and higher highs, right? So we got the higher high, but we do have a lower low. And you really want to start seeing us putting in higher lows in order to uh, feel more confident that this price action here is going to lead us back up towards, you know, new highs above this breakout area that's been tested, tested once and failed, tested a second time and failed, got above it a third time, was rejected and pulled back in. And I think, you know, right now it just seems like we're in a weak area uh, for the indexes after a pretty bullish move from December. Um, I've set a new price level here at this low of this candle of 153.67. So I really, at this point, I'm looking for this not to start getting back below this area. If we start breaking below this area, I think we have a, a higher likelihood of testing the bottom of this channel and this pullback that we had here and maybe even going lower than that. Um, you know with all this tariff nonsense going on and, and the tweets and all the other volatility activity going on, um, you know it's equally likely we're going back down than going back up. So I think going forward it's uh, I'm a little cautious. Um, if I look at the MACD and the RSI they have definitely released you know and have come back down to the Towards the lows, I wouldn't say it's oversold yet, 
the MACD is somewhat flattened out, but it hasn't yet curled back up, so I wouldn't say that we've got enough momentum built up yet that we're going to be headed back to the upside. But we certainly, you know, with these buying tails uh, and the good volume, we did find some support here, and, and that's really why I'm putting this 153.67 level in for the IWM. I'm going to say that I'm a little bit concerned overall. If I look at the monthly chart, you can see the momentum is starting to break over on the monthly. <clears throat> you know, it isn't continuing back up. You know, if we're going to make new highs, this has got to continue to, you know, it, it can flatten out and we can get some slowing momentum here, but you really want to start seeing this heading back up and hitting this breakout level and heading towards the top of the channel. If this thing starts rolling over and back down again, and price action starts coming back down, this is really nothing more than being overbought in a downtrend, right? So this particular trend, since we haven't broken this high on the monthly side, we start, still are technically in a downtrend. You know, we have, uh, we don't yet have a higher high and we have a lower low. So if this thing rolls over, and this is showing some activity, you know, some idea of exhaustion. I would be very careful uh, of feeling like, you know, we're in for new all-time highs uh, in the Russell going forward. All right. So enough on that. We'll go to the Qs, which is the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ, of course, um, was the strongest one we talked about uh, looking for some resistance going back. You know, we... I wasn't here to recap this week. We were at this week the last time I did a video and I said it looks like we're headed to the top of the channel but I'd be looking for resistance and we actually did get that right. We had a, um, a buying tail in the weekly and then we ended up folding back over after we hit the top of the price channel. It is kind of amazing how these things work. We talked about being overbought in the uh, for RSI and looking for some level of sideways action and, and more likely a pullback uh, to the cloud on the daily and we did end up getting that over the last couple of weeks so that uh, theory we talked about in the week in the weekly video a couple weeks ago and what to look for and what to be careful about I think has uh, come to fruition we did get our higher high in the uh, triple Q's we are going to get a pullback and I'm looking for the pullback to in essence give us a higher low and then continuation to the upside if we're going to stay in this trend. Um, from the overbought level, we did pull back a little bit. Um, I don't know if we're done on the pullback. We'll have to see, you know, what happens over the next couple of weeks. But, um, you know, we did get some activity, uh, you know, on the pullback side. Again, buying tails. We had the outside day on the daily chart for the triple Qs. Uh, if I look at... Uh, RSI we did get on the daily RSI we are into the oversold zone and we can see the last couple of times we've gotten down in this area we did have some pretty bullish price action back to the highs and if you look at the major components of the NASDAQ the Amazons and the Facebooks and Googles and Microsoft and, and a lot of those they're all showing some uh, different levels of pullback and they may be, you know, viable pullbacks uh, into and around the cloud um, on those particular price charts. The NASDAQ has on its uh, daily bar close here, you know, showing a slight upward tick in the MACD. And the MACD is a little bit lower than, you know, some of these lows here. So we have had a pretty good pullback in the NASDAQ and with the buying tails and the close, you know, in a pretty... A decent area you know look for a little bit of continuation we may end up getting continuation and then another pullback <clears throat> we'll see you know how the next day fair or next week fares I do still think we're in a risky zone it would not surprise me to see this pullback find you know support as it has start coming back up and then back down again this could be you know an ABC correction right where this could be the A this could be the B you know, we might get up over the 49 and then back down for a C, you know, maybe down into this price area here, you know, the 178, this low volume node and volume profile. Um, this is the one year volume profile. So if you look at this low volume node down in this area might be another support zone to be looking at. But at the moment, I've got this price level, you know, 182, 83, <coughs> excuse me, as the... Um, 
area to be looking at. If we start pulling down below that, we might end up going for uh, newer lower lows. I've also drawn a little box here, you know, from the low of this candle to the low of this candle. This right now has been the support zone, and if we start breaking below that, we probably are going to get a little bit more of a, a liquidation sell-off uh, in the triple Qs. Uh, let's see, do we have anything else to talk about on the weekly? Not really. I think we're in pretty good shape. Otherwise, um, you know, we'll say the MACD is still pointed down on the weekly, so you're going to look for that to either, you know, um, find some level of consolidation. We may get some uh, contracted price action or find, you know, we've got to find a way where this gets back towards the zero line probably and, uh, you know, finds its way back upward uh, going forward. All right. And the SPY. Okay, and the S&P, uh, we, you know, we did hit the new all-time high in the S&P, and it was uh, summarily rejected. So on the weekly, we hit the mid-price between, <coughs> excuse me, the upper end of the channel and the center line of the channel. I'm sporting a little bit of a cold here, so I apologize for the coughing and uh, the crazy voice here. But um, at this point, we did, ha we did hit a new all-time high in SPY, and it was rejected at the mid price of the upper channel we did get the pullback on the daily chart um, we did have a pullback you know we've been talking about pullbacks to the cloud on these extended moves away from the cloud we did get the pullback here uh, we did you know get somewhat of a an ABC correction in this move downward we have not back closed back above the cloud again it was an outside day we had a lower low and a higher high close near the highs, look for continuation. We really got to keep moving upward and set a higher low in order for this downtrend to be over, let's say. We are in the oversold zone uh, for RSI. It was a pretty deep pullback in terms of MACD. So all these, you know, would indicate this downward move more than likely is exhausted for now. Um, you know, we did have the breakout of this consolidation box that we had been talked about before. Uh, this pivot high, we did break out above it. We got pretty good above it, and then we've got the deep pullback. We did close above it still, so it was in a you know rejected area, and it's somewhat not quite a doji on the weekly, but it certainly shows we've had some uh, level of indecision on the weekly uh, weekly chart here. And just like I've talked about in the IWM, I don't really want to see the MACD and the monthly start rolling over. Um, if this thing starts flattening out and rolling over back down, we could get another move back down to the bottom end of this uh, upward price channel. And you certainly don't, you know, obviously beyond that, want to see us breaking that and heading even lower. Uh, with this uh, tariff-driven news uh, period, I'd be looking for any retaliation by China or not willingness to set up any future meetings um, to have negotiations on this trade war situation that we're in um, is all areas of concern uh, going forward and, and we'll have to see how that how that fares all right uh, just point out the expected moves are quite elevated for next week on the ES we have plus or minus 76 points the NQ plus or minus 200 points and the YM plus or minus 612 points and those are roughly 50% wider in expected move range that they have than they have been in a while. That's not a surprise. We do have the uh, VIX, which we have talked about uh, over time. Let's see if I can grab my VIX chart here. Uh, we did have a big move in the VIX last week. Um, we did get a move and close outside the Bollinger Bands on the daily chart. Um, you know, we had a pretty bullish move outside the, the Bollinger Bands. You, know, you can see we had a volatility squeeze here, right? So we kind of tightened up on this contraction zone. And usually when you see this thing really tightening up, it's wound up and built up a lot of energy for a big move. And typically in VIX, moves don't go down, they go up. You know, there was a lot of um, uh, news uh, reports that talked about a lot of VIX calls being bought, and uh, I think those guys were paid quite handily here. So, you know, in your own trading as you go forward, throwing the Bollinger Bands on 
a daily chart looking for close, you know, looking for these tight volatility areas and knowing these are often leading towards, uh, you know, volatility contraction leads to expansion. We certainly saw a lot of expansion here. Once we started having multiple closes outside the Bollinger Band, you get two or three days closes outside from a volatility explosion like you have here. You know, I looked at this high at 2184 and we didn't hit it again here. We got outside of it on Thursday and pulled back within it. I started selling premium uh, outside the market. You know, like iron condors at uh, uh, 10 delta short strikes, you know, really wide, wide uh, range of, um, you know, price. You can get paid pretty good on those. Uh, and I've got a, a number of those that I've added in. I'm not going to hold them too long. I won't hold them to expiration in June and July. I'm just going to take some quick, you know, 30 to 50% profits if I can get them as the volatility tends to contract, right? So you're selling basically volatility when it's elevated up here and then it, as it contracts quite a bit, it's when you start closing those trades and we're back within, you know, this uh, wide volatility range here uh, in the VIX. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about is uh, some price action on Friday, and I was pretty active at posting in the Facebook group for those that are watching it. Um, and I'm going to show here the price ladder and talk a little bit about what I was seeing. It was kind of interesting, and uh, I posted, you know, some things about the um, the plunge protection team. Uh, and you can go, you know, look at the Facebook post and do your own Google research on the plunge protection team and what's going on there but I want to talk a little bit about uh, a couple of charts here for those who are interested um, in looking at what I saw and you know maybe setting some of this up on you can't set this stuff up I'm going to show you here on Thinkorswim but if you have other tools and other things like Sierra charts with infinity um, you know you might uh, you know look for these sort of things yourself in the future that being said, looking at the price ladder here, right? So this is the ES price ladder, and, and the way this works is you have, you know, the inside market is the place where the uh, active bids meet the offers, and typically this doesn't, you know, this is the, on a Saturday, so there's no price action here, and there's really no volume in the dome. This is a depth of market chart, and uh, I will trade futures and some stocks and things like that on this uh, dome itself, and think or swim it's the uh, what they call the active trader ladder or dome depth of market anyway so if you know you have buyers on this side of the chart and sellers on this side of the chart and you know these are this is somebody offering to buy eight contracts and this is somebody offering to sell ten contracts and the way this works is if you're coming into the market and you want to be bullish you typically will cross over and buy these contracts. Um, some people wait for some, you know, others to sell and cross over and take, you know, their contracts for sale and cross over and hit the offer. But you know, if you're lifting the market and you're bullish and you're got a lot of contracts to buy, you're typically going to want to absorb all of these contracts for sale. So these are sellers offering to sell their inventory at this price or open contracts uh, if they don't have inventory thinking the market's going down you know they're gonna uh, you know sell short the market at these points so you've got crossover so the point I'm trying to make here is that in order to lift the market you've got to cross over and start buying up the sellers inventory and in order to push the market down more sellers have to cross over and sell against the bid inventory to drive the market down okay so here's a way of looking at that that I have set up in my Sierra charts. Um, uh, it's what they call the numbers bars or number charts. So what these are are 15 minute price bars. And what it shows is the volume uh, between the crossover of the bid and the offer. And if I zoom in here, uh, you can see at this price and this price, there's you know crossover so 3188 contracts were bought going from this price to this price and when it was at this price 3425 were sold so that's how you get those numbers and as price gets lifted you know it's going up and down up and down up and down that's the pricing activity going on in the depth of market and what I typically do as I set indicators I don't really care about the numbers where there's a balance between buyers and sellers what I'm looking for is the imbalances and what I have set up here 
is if I get a green box on my numbers chart, it shows a period where there were 10 times or more of buying activity contracts versus selling. So you can see, you know, we ran out of selling uh, sellers, you know, willing to push the market down here. We had 13 contracts to sale, sell, and it didn't go any lower than that, so we had none, you know, that were buying up the market. So we basically, this move exhausted down here, and then we started getting buying activity. And I paint a green box when the buying is 10 times or greater more than the sell side, and I paint it blue if it's two times or more. And on the sell side, I paint red boxes if the, reds, the red activity to push down is 10 times greater than the, you know, where it came from, and it's orange if it's two times, right? So what I'm looking for, is the pushes down, you know, the impulses down and the big moves down like this, you know, where we, you know, have price activity and then suddenly it's a push, 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 push. You get a lot of volume coming in for sale and then the next 15 minute bar opens, we get a little bit, bit of an up mood and then boom, we start pushing down again to the point where sellers are exhausted and then we start getting these buying activities. Somebody says, okay, I think this is a great cheap price to buy at. I'm going to start buying the market up here. And that's how you get the, you know, the ends of these buying and selling activities uh, going on. So how does that look in a cumulative picture? This chart down here is the accumulation, uh, which I reset every day, of the buyers versus sellers. So in this 15-minute bar, what this candle here shows is the imbalance of buyers versus sellers. So when it's green and moving up, it means there are more buyers buying the market than selling. And this is the 9.30 open on Monday, the regular time hours. You can see uh, the market did, you know, start at zero and it started buying up. And we went from, you know, the open that was down here where the beginning of this green price stripe is we had a, a bullish move up, right? We had a little bit of a move down, but we had more of a bullish move up and indicated by volume delta, we're getting more volume buying up, you know, buying the ask than selling on the offer. And then suddenly in this price bar, the next 15 minutes over, you know, we started getting downward price activity, you know? So we, we got up to this 2866 level that I talked about in the pre-market Facebook group and I, have mentioned that this is sort of a sink or swim line. It was a big breakout level before, and I was looking for us to, you know, get and hold above that level. And if we rejected, you know, based on all the tariff activity and news that Trump was uh, tweeting out at 7 o'clock in the morning, we more than likely were going to be heading uh, quite a bit back further down. And if you look at volume delta, we in fact got this, right? So we had, you know, a good solid hours worth of or hour and 15 minute worth of activity of significant price uh, movement down to the tune of you know almost 20,000 contracts in the ES uh, to the negative sell side you know and there really wasn't any news that I saw that would suggest to me <coughs> excuse me that you know we were going to have anything more than what this turned out to be a down a trend down day and then I started posting in the Facebook group, I noticed that the volume delta, you know, started flattening out. You know, the sellers were still trying to push the market down, but there were buyers in the market trying to absorb that inventory. So we're really starting to push down and we're really not going anywhere. And this is an indication that we at least have buyers either closing, you know, their shorts and selling to others, or there are buyers in the market that really want to find a way to lift the market. Now, with the news activity, I couldn't see any reason why there were going to be buyers wanting to buy this market. However, um, you'll see that, you know, even though price was stuck here for another almost 45 minutes, you know, this, this period here was a good 45-minute block, and we're starting to get positive volume delta, which means all the selling activity, <coughs> you know, that was sitting in the market on the ask was being bought by people crossing over the market and buying those contracts. Price wasn't moving, right? So supply was still put, you know, throwing inventory in the market to sell and the buyers were buying it, buying it, buying it. And suddenly there was no more supply and the buyers were able to lift the market way, way, way above, you know, the place where we had before. 
and we really had a significant short covering trend up day. So we went from trend down to trend up. And, you know, we drove uh, pretty high. We ended up with the outside day, as I said. We broke above the close of the prior day. So it went from, you know, I think the ES was down over 40 points, maybe 50 points or so at one point. And we closed, went all the way back to green on the day and had a little pullback at the end. You know, we did have people, uh, I think, closing uh, their long contracts, you know, after a pretty bullish move, those that bought here and drove it up you know, some of them probably closed, and that shows that we went from, you know, a negative 20,000 to a plus 16 or 17,000 uh, contract uh, volume delta, and then we had profit taking near the close, but we still closed quite a bit near the high. So, I don't know, it was qu pretty interesting price activity. I couldn't see a reason for that, um, you know, other than, you know, my conspiracy theory is the plunge protection team, but you know, we did close around this 2866 area, that which is the key breakout area that, um, you know, I had tracked uh, from much earlier in time, back back in the week of uh, March 18th and 22nd. That was the weekly high we had during that week. And still, to me, the sink or swim line for where we're going here going forward in ES. Anyway, hope that was interesting. Hope it helped. And, um, you know, going forward, I wish you guys luck. A lot of things to look for in the next week, a lot of news-driven activity. Uh, we are coming into the, you know, we're in the uh, sell in May and go away uh, for the summer. So with all this going on here, it might not be a bad time to uh, sit back and watch some of the activity in the market. I have myself moved to a lot of cash other than selling some premium that I'm selling. Uh, going to, uh, you know, try to take off re reasonably quickly because I think, you know, volatility is here to stay, and there's a lot of stuff to look for. Take care, guys. Have a good week next week, and uh, be careful out there.